Hey everyone, it's Josh here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and that is making tier lists. On one of my community tabs, I said that I wished I could do tier lists one day, and today's the day that my dream finally comes true. So yeah, I've just seen like lots of tier lists videos on YouTube, and I was like, hey, these are pretty cool, I do want to try them out for myself. So I went to the tier maker website where you guys can definitely check it out and make your own tier lists there and post them on your YouTube channel or just show them to whoever you want to. And yeah, I told you guys that I was going to be doing tier lists one day and y'all seem to have liked the idea, especially when I made that video where I asked you guys what you want me to make on the channel. So tier lists is a start. But anyway, let's get into the video. So for today's tier lists, we are going to be ranking all of the 3D Super Mario games. And yeah, if you're a huge Mario fan like me, I you, you've you definitely taken the time to complete every 3D Mario game that has released very thoroughly. Because me being one of those people that have played every 3D Mario game and 100%ed all of them completely... Yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, and give you all my thoughts on these awesome 3D Mario games. Thank you, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, for letting me play Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine for the first time. Alright, y'all, so with no further ado, let's begin this tier list. We're of course going to be starting off with the very first 3D Mario game that has released, which is Super Mario 64, a very legendary game. Alright, I'm pretty sure everyone in the Mario community has to at least played this game once. 64 is just one of those games that has definitely, remain, re definitely remained in Nintendo's library as of course one of their best masterpieces. I mean, this game is so iconic at this point, it's one of the best video games of all time. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with Super Mario 64. I mean, it has so many great levels, great characters... Great soundtrack. Yeah, pretty much everything about this game is great. I love Super Mario 64. And sure, some might say that this game hasn't really aged well, but does it really matter? I mean, just because, like, you know, I mean, it was, of course, back in 19 1996. And, yeah, it was, like I said, it was Mario's first ever 3D game. And it was just a really great retcon, a great rendition of the Mario series. Like, it was just a great transition from 2D to 3D with Mario. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for this game, we wouldn't even have the So Long Gay Bowser meme, which is still being used to this day. Now I kind of see why people were upset that they got rid of it in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And yeah, overall, there's not really anything bad I can say about this game. I mean, it's really perfect. And yeah, even though when you progress through the game and just try to, like, get all the power stars, well, good luck with that, by the way, things will definitely be a challenge, and it certainly won't be easy getting all the power stars. And yeah, I can't believe I actually took the time to get them all, especially with the fact that you have to get 100 coins in every level to get a star from that. Although, if I am being honest, I'm not really a big fan of Rainbow Ride. Yeah, if I'm being honest, Rainbow Ride is just a really insane level. But yeah, much like all the other Mario games, this is one you should definitely come back to every now and then just to experience the fun that it definitely has going for it. And yeah, while Super Mario 64 may not be 100% perfect, it certainly is like 95% perfect. So yeah, I'm gonna have to put this bad boy on 8, wait no not C, put it on A tier because it's a really fantastic game. I absolutely love it. So yeah, Super Mario 64 goes on A. Alright, now let's go on to the next game, which is Super Mario Sunshine. Oh man, where do I begin with Super Mario Sunshine? Let me just be honest here. I have a bunch of mixed feelings about this game. Part of me loves it, and part of me hates it. And yeah, before all you Sunshine lovers get mad at me and just leave your angry comments and dislike the video, just hear me out first. Super Mario Sunshine isn't a bad game by any means. As a matter of fact, I think it's probably one of the most prettiest Mario games out there. I mean, I love the whole summer vibe this whole game went for. They basically took everything we loved about Super Mario 64 and just basically put it all in here. 
But I feel some of the bad stuff from Super Mario 64, they kind of did a little bit too much here. I mean, for real, this game gets challenging and challenging at every level you go after a level. Don't even get me started on these mid-subsections where you just have to do a bunch of platforming without flood. It's just a real pain in the butt. And yeah, I get it. The game is supposed to get difficult as you go, but I feel it's just not really done correctly or fairly here in a way. And yeah, even those missions where you have to go around chasing Shadow Mario are just way too quick and boring, I'll be honest. And those darn blue coins are so obnoxiously hard to find. Good luck trying to find them all without having to look up online. But yeah, ignoring all of the bad stuff, you definitely will have some fun times playing Super Mario Sunshine. It's not all bad, but it's just it just gets way too difficult as you go on. Again, I don't hate the game at all, but I just feel... It could have been a little bit better, honestly. And yeah, much like Super Mario 64, the boss battles are pretty clever and unique. Gooper Blooper is probably one of my favorite enemies in the Mario series. And Flood was a pretty awesome addition to the whole vibe that this game went for. It's just a really nice addition to the Mario series and characters. But, yeah, overall, I just feel kind of meh, like, in the middle with Super Mario Sunshine. It's not a bad game by any means, but I just feel it just gets way, way difficult. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. And the game is not, of course, perfect, but and it's probably not, like, like a 100% Mario game I would definitely recommend, but you should definitely give it a try, I mean, if you're curious and all. So, yeah, I'm sorry to do this, but I'm gonna have to put Super Mario Sunshine on D. And yeah, the game isn't perfect, and it's it's not bad, but it's just not, like, as good either. Sorry for all you Sunshine fans who are mad at me, but everyone's entitled to their own opinion, right? Up next is Super Mario 64 DS. Yeah, a lot of people, including me, are definitely gonna get nostalgia for this game. If you ask me, I think this version of the Super Mario 64 is much, much better than the original. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not much of an opinion, but whatever. I had just as much fun with this game as the original back then when I was little. I think this game actually fixed almost all of the issues that the original Super Mario 64 game had. For one, they enhanced the graphics, you can play as more pl characters, and they even had you collect 30 more stars. In the original game, there were a total of 120 power stars. But now, in this version, there are 150 power stars. So this game especially has tons of replay values. But, I gotta say, playing a 3D game with a D-pad feels really weird. It kinda makes me wish that this game got a remake on the 3DS and not the DS. And they even added mini-games in this port, to, and it involves the touchscreen, which makes really good use of it. And yeah, I had a lot of fun playing this game, and I still come back to it every now and then just to experience what I experienced as a little kid. Kinda weird how they put more effort into this and not 3D All-Stars. And yeah, if you haven't played this game yet, do yourself a favor and go buy it and play it, because it definitely deserves your time. You will have a blast with Super Mario 64 DS. So Super Mario 64 DS is gonna go on... A, because it's pretty decent, and of course it's close to the original. Next up is Super Mario Galaxy, the legendary game. Oh my gosh, I remember watching the very first trailer for the game on YouTube back when I was a toddler, and this just that trailer just made me really excited to play this game. I swear, every time I play Super Mario Galaxy, it just leaves a huge smile on my face. If you ask me, this game has aged surprisingly well, and it still holds up even today. I mean, this game is really just out of this world. Yeah, you could sue me for that bad pun. Just all of the different planets that you can explore throughout this game is just incredible. Of course, Super Mario Galaxy has plenty of crazy physics, like just, of just how you can just bounce around the whole planet and stuff. It's actually pretty fun and, like, not at all in, like, a pain. I mean, it is slightly a pain, but it's just kind of fun at the same time. 
And Rosalina is by far one of the best Mario characters out there. I mean, she's literally the goddess of the cosmos. Galaxy also had an interesting line of power-ups, like the Bee Mushroom, which is probably one of my favorite power-ups in the Mario series. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with this game. Super Mario Galaxy is a really beautiful game, and no one can disagree. And this was, of course, one of the first few games that released for the Wii. And they really took advantage of the Wii's hardware with, the, like, the controls and such. And, of course, we cannot forget about the marvelous soundtrack that this game has going for it. I mean, it's they literally got a whole orchestra to play the soundtrack for this game. It's just awesome. Like, I've literally listened to the main theme of Galaxy all my life. And all of the boss battles that Super Mario Galaxy had, they're just absolutely insane. Like, especially this boss right here. Mega Leg. I swear, Nintendo really went all out with this game. And there's really not any other Mario game out there quite like it. I'm gonna put Super Mario Galaxy on A with Super Mario 64 and Super Mario 64 DS. Because it definitely deserves to be there. Next, we have Super Mario Galaxy 2. I swear, Nintendo really went all out when they made the Galaxy games. And of course, Super Mario Galaxy 2 was no difference. It was just as good as the first one. Although, it may not have been just as good as the first game because there are several differences that this game has, and some of them are a little bit laid back, if I'm being honest. Like, instead of, to ha of having to go to like some certain rooms to find out the galaxies you can go to, Galaxy 2 gives you a world map, which is actually pretty neat, but I felt it, it was a little more interesting in the first one. But this game certainly makes up for all that because the galaxies you can explore are just as good, if not better. I mean, just with all the new stuff that they added in this game makes it feel like it's a totally brand new game and not at all like related to the first Galaxy game. But I feel they kind of dumbed down the story a little bit in Galaxy 2 as opposed to the other one. You see, in the first Galaxy game, Bowser wanted, got, wanted to create his own galaxy empire in the center of the universe and wanted to have Peach on his side. And it just made you really feel like Bowser was really evil, because, well, he was. But in Galaxy 2, he just kidnaps Peach and forces her to bake him a cake? Yeah, believe it or not, that's how it is. Also, answer me this, Nintendo. Why in the heck is there a typo in this sentence right here? Anyway, unlike the in Super Mario Galaxy 1 where they actually took everything seriously, it kind of just feels like Galaxy, Ju Galaxy 2 just played everything as a joke. It almost felt like Galaxy 1, but it almost kind of didn't. They just went for more of a kid-friendly kind of vibe, which is not bad at all, but... I just think Galaxy 1 did a better job at, like, making the story. I mean, I'm not, of course, hating on this game because I love it deeply. I remember when it was revealed, I was super excited that we were getting a sequel. But, yeah, after looking back at it now, I kind of realized some of the stuff that went on with it. Which can kind of explain why it wasn't in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. But yeah, either way, I love Super Mario Galaxy 2. I mean, it had great controls, great galaxies, great power-ups, and even great boss battles. And of course, great soundtrack like the first Galaxy game. This sure is one game that shouldn't be forgotten. So yeah, I guess we'll just put Super Mario Galaxy 2 on B for now. Because while it was of course an incredible game, I feel Super Mario Galaxy 1 went for more of a darker tone. So it was basically more fun than Galaxy 1, but Galaxy 1 had a somewhat better story. Now is Super Mario 3D Land. I'll never forget the day I woke up on Christmas morning and opened my first Nintendo 3DS along with this awesome game. If you ask me, this game almost feels like they port completely ported Super Mario Galaxy to a handheld system. Mario even makes the same sound effects as he did in Galaxy. One of the best things about this game is the fact that they brought back the Tanuki suit, which is still being used to this day. And yeah, sadly you can't fly with it, but it's still pretty fun to have. This game also had a new power-up called the Boomerang Flower, which is pretty fantastic. Now we can finally get back at those Boomerang Bros. But yeah, Super Mario 3D Land, it's a very, very 
interesting and unique game. I mean, I'm sure many of the kids in the past decade had to at least experience this awesome masterpiece. I remember when I was little, I would play this game nonstop because it was just so fun to just roam around these levels, and it just felt really great for a new system, well, at the time. This game and Mario Kart 7 were the main games that I played on my 3DS back then, and I had a blast, especially with Super Mario 3D Land. And you know what? I actually get really confused when people say this game is bad, because it obviously is not. I mean, it sold so much back when the 3DS was released. But of course, not every video game is perfect. One thing I seem to have noticed now about Super Mario 3D Land is the enlarged amount of filler. The fact that Nintendo just tried really hard to extend the limit of this game has just felt really unnecessary. After you complete the f first 8 worlds of the game, you're actually somewhat forced to do more worlds when you finish the game. So you're basically, some, like I said, somewhat forced to do more after you just completed the game, which was kind of a pain, but not really much nowadays. I mean, yeah, like I said, after completing worlds 1 through 8, you have to like go through worlds, spe spe the special worlds 1-8 and get all the star medals, which can unlock the final champion level. It's kind of a shame that they were they really were just trying to add more game time to this by just like going all out and just adding like eight more worlds after you just completed the first eight. But yeah, other than that, Super Mario 3D Land is a really great game, and I'm definitely coming back to it every now and then. You you all should too. So let's put Super Mario 3D Land on C, because it's of course not a perfect like Mario game. I mean, I really love it, but I feel it was just really filler, and they just tried to extend it unnecessarily long. Coming up next is Super Mario 3D World. Another one of the games that I got for Christmas, along with my Wii U in 2013. If you've been following my channel for a long time now, then you would of course know that I've played Super Mario 3D World a lot. And it basically proves how much I love the game. I mean, the game is so good that they literally ported it to the Switch in 2021. And it sold more than the Wii U version. I mean, I just come back to this game almost every week, of course on the Switch version because it's just much better and faster paced. And yeah, Super Mario 3D World is of course one of my favorite Mario games of all time. I mean, not just the soundtrack and everything, I mean, of course the soundtrack is incredible. One of the main reasons why this game is the way it is and why I love it so much. But the gameplay, the power-ups, and just everything about this game is really uh, astounding to me. I mean, this was the very first game to introduce the Cat Bell, which is of course, which is probably one of the best power-ups in Ma in Mario history. I mean, you're literally a cat. What's better than that? And just hearing the characters make funny kit cat sounds is really adorable and just hilarious. I honestly think this game may be the best level-based Mario game. The levels are just awesomely, just very greatly designed. I believe this was actually the very first 3D Mario game to be in HD, which is actually pretty shocking. And sure, 3D World may not be like a fully fledged sandbox 3D sandbox Mario game, but it doesn't really need to be like that in order for it to be like a fantastic game. I love Super Mario 3D World no matter what. Also, you gotta love how they made some of the gimmicks in this game that really tried to advance the hardware. And just the fact that you can play up to five characters, including Rosalina, and those five characters having their own special abilities is actually awesome, and I really liked it. It's just a really a lot like Super Mario Bros. 2 on the NES. But again, much like Super Mario 3D Land, they just try to extend the game's limit by just making more harder levels after you complete the final Bowser battle, which is really unnecessary. But this game actually does it somewhat better than 3D Land. For one, you don't have to do a whole another eight worlds like 3D Land. You could just do like like three other or, or four other worlds. Uh, but don't even get me started on Champions Road. Uh, I still have nightmares from this level. This is just one of those games where the first few levels are of course very easy. But then when you get to the very last few levels, it's going to be super, super difficult. I actually think that's pretty good and unique. It doesn't really make it too easy. 
but also not too hard as well. And the boss battles in this game are way better than 3D Land. At least here they're actually very original and not just boom boom and pom pom over and over again. So I'm going to put Super Mario 3D World on B with Super Mario Galaxy 2. Because while it's better than its predecessor, 3D Land, it's just not as good as Galaxy. Next up is the one and only Super Mario Odyssey. Do I really need an introduction for this? Because y'all know Super Mario Odyssey is my favorite game of all time. I think it's pretty much the ultimate Mario game. It just really captures everything right about Mario. The game is absolutely marvelous. It's basically all the 3D Mario games before combined into one. Although if you guys want my full thoughts and opinions of Super Mario Odyssey, then you guys can watch that video I made called Why I Love Super Mario Odyssey that I made about a few months ago. I'll leave a link to it in the description, but yeah, I'll just give it in, just give it to you all short on why this game is just an absolute masterpiece to me. Great characters, great soundtrack, great kingdoms, great boss battles, and great abilities. To me, Super Mario Odyssey does not have a single flaw, and it's pretty obvious why I love it so much, and why it's my most favorite Mario game of all time. Even the story is fantastic too, how Bowser try, of course kidnaps Peach and forces her to marry him. Yeah, I don't really need much reasoning for this because it's pretty obvious why I'm putting this game on top tier. Nothing will ever stop me from loving Super Mario Odyssey. I freaking love this game so much. And it always will be my number one favorite game of all time. Super Mario Odyssey is going on the tippy tippy top right here. Now, on to the final game, Bowser's Fury. Yeah, I know this isn't exactly a full-on fledged 3D Mario game, but it just kind of feels like it, don't you think? You know, ever since the release of Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury, I've been playing the Bowser's Fury add-on mode non-stop. I mean, I'd say I've become pretty attached to it because I, of course, now know where every cat shine is located. That's just one issue that I have with this game. It's just the fact that there's only 100 cat shines. Like, why is there only 100? Why couldn't there have been more to collect? It would have totally added more challenge to it. But yeah, you know, other than that, Bowser's Fury is a pretty decent new game mode for Super Mario 3D World standards. I mean, just the fact that Bowser has completely lost it this time is absolutely insane. And the segments where you fight Fury Bowser as Giga Cat Mario is really, really awesome. I just love doing these battles. I mean, this new adventure mode just has a lot going for it, and it's pretty crazy when you think about it. I mean, ba Mario and Bowser Jr. teaming up for the first time? What can be re weirder and crazier than that? And once again, if I'm being honest, this just really feels a lot like Super Mario 3D World and Super Mario Odyssey combined. Like, my whole Odyssey memory really just screwed me over when I played this new game mode, because it just felt a lot like Odyssey. I just kind of wish there was more stuff to do after you collected all the cat shines because, I mean, there's not really that much of a replay value, but it, you'll, it's just really fun to just go back and get, like, all the cat shines over and over, and I've just been playing this nonstop, and it's still fun to me. I can't imagine one day they'd be making a Bowser's Fury 2, but yeah, let's just not get ahead of ourselves here. And let's not forget the fabulous soundtrack that this new mode has as well. I mean, it was almost basically the same as 3D World, so, and of course 3D World had awesome soundtracks, so it wasn't a surprise that this was going to have a good soundtrack too. Although if I am, of course, being honest for the, like, the 500th time in this video, the soundtrack is just, I mean, well, you know, to say the least, I honestly didn't expect it to just have like a decent soundtrack. Well, it has a better than decent, because it was just like a new added game mode but it was nintendo so of course they make a great soundtrack for this new game mode like i've listened to scamper shores and the fury bowser theme pretty much for the past year ever since it was released oh yeah this new game mode is about to be a year old th this month 
So yeah, overall, you're going to have a really great time with Bowser's Fury. So it's I, I think it's probably a beginner kind of game, like for one of those few people who have never played a Mario game. Like seriously, what is wrong with them? Even for us players, it's pretty great. I love Bowser's Fury. So now Bowser's Fury is going to go on B with, of course, it's, of course, original Super Mario 3D World. All right, everyone. Well, that was my 3D Mario tier list. I'd say I've done a pretty decent job on my very first tier list. Of course, this is just a start because I actually do have plans for more tier lists in the future. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. I mean, do you agree with all the fat, all the tiers that I put these 3D Mario games on? Do you disagree? Just let me know your opinions in the comments below. Also, let me know in the comments what tier lists on topics that I should make next. But yeah, I might as well end off the video now because I didn't think it was going to be 25 minutes long. I can't imagine anyone actually stayed this long, but if you did, props to you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching this tier list video. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.